The 555 timer IC is an integrated circuit that is used in a variety of timer circuits, pulse generators and oscillator applications. The heart of the module is the 555 timer IC that is wired as an A-stable multivibrator, generating pulse from about 4 Hz to 1.3 kHz. The circuit can be used in any project that requires positive pulse. To demonstrate the operation, a LED is used at the output of the IC to show the visual indication of the output pulses. The output frequency of the pulses can be adjusted using a potentiometer. The circuit can be operated from any voltage between 5 volt to 15 volt DC. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminium PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. For this project, we need one 555 timer IC, one 10 microfarad capacitor, one 1 kilo ohm resistance and a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. The circuit is very simple. By connecting pin number 2 and 6, we put the 555 timer in A-stable mode. A-stable mode causes the 555 timer to re-trigger itself, producing a stream of pulses, the PWM signals, as long as it's hooked up to the power supply. Pin number 3 is the output pin. By changing the value of R1, R2 and C3, we can change the frequency of the output pulses generated at pin number 3. The working voltage of the circuit is between 5 to 15 volt DC. As previously discussed, 555 timer generates PWM signal when set up in an A-stable mode by connecting the pin number 2 and 6 together. During each cycle, capacitor C3 charges up through resistor R1 and R2 but discharges itself through the resistor R2 as the other side of R2 is connected to the discharge terminal pin number 7. Changing the value of R1 and R2 and C3 will change the frequency of output pulse or different duty cycle of the square wave coming out of pin number 3. By changing the value of R2, we can change the duration of the off cycle. In this setup, the on time depends on the resistor R1, the left side of the port and the capacitor C3, while the off time depends on the capacitor C3 and the right side of the port. Now let's calculate the output frequency and the duty cycle of the output waveform. In my setup, I have resistance R1 equal to 1 kilo ohm, R2 as 10 kilo ohm, and capacitor C as 10 microfarad. There are many online calculators to calculate this online. I'll provide a link to one of the A stable calculators in the description below. Let's first calculate the value of T1 or the capacitor charge on time, which is 0 0.693 R1 plus R2 into C3. Putting the values together, we get 76.23 milliseconds. Now for capacitor discharge off time or T2, we need to multiply 0 0.693 to R2 and C3, which then gives a value of 69.3 milliseconds. Next, the total periodic time T is equal to T1 plus T2, which comes out to be 145.23 milliseconds. The output frequency F is therefore 6.871 Hertz which gives a duty cycle value of 52.38%. If you want to have more control over the charging and discharging, use a higher value of R2, 100K, and a lower value of R1, 1K. That way you'll have 99% control over the charging and discharging resistance of the circuit. The maximum output current of this IC is 200 milliampere. Therefore, to drive a higher current load of up to 1 amp, we have to use a transistor like BD135. For driving a much higher current than 1 amp, you can use other high current transistors like TIP31, 2 and 3055, etc. with a good heat sink. TIP122 can only go up to about 1.5 amps without a heat sink. However, it can go up to 5 amps with a good heat sink. IRLB8743 FET is a good to run 20 amps without a heat sink. So this is how my board looks like in 2D and 3D. There are 16 breakout boards in this 100cm by 100cm assembly. You can download the Gerber file from the link below and order it from PCBWay. Once I had my design ready, I just had to upload the Gerber file to the PCBWay's website and then select the type color and any other customization that I want and then just send it for fabrication. For my project, I chose the black color. PCB was ships from China to most of the countries of the world within 3 to 7 business days. Talking about the quality, it's absolutely mind blowing. Let's start by sorting the IC base to the board. Then let's solder the potentiometer to the board. After that, let's solder the R1 resistor to the board followed by the C3 capacitor to the circuit plate.
once done, let's place the 555 timer IC to the IC base. To conclude, I have soldered three male pin headers to the board. So this is the final appearance of the board. I'm adjusting the output frequency of the pulse using the 10K potentiometer. This circuit can be used to control the speed of DC motors, square wave signal generator, adjustable pulse generator for MCUs, driving stepper motors, in telecommunication for encoding purposes, to generate a stable pulse to control other circuits. I have used this in few of my old projects like DIY Boba Fett helmet with LED chaser circuit, LED chaser circuit using IC4017 and Arduino DIY LAN cable tester. Thanks again for watching this video, I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks, see you again in my next video. Bye now.